Uh, not this guy again. Oh, boy. All right, everybody. Let's let's work together. Let's practice a little empathy, shall we? Come on. Let's go on a... Everybody, let's go on a heart journey. Hold hands. Heart trip. Uh, and let's pretend that we are uh, not not this a-hole. Uh, Walter Hamada. Let's pretend for a minute that we are Walter Hamada, new president of DC Films. Brought on board. Hired by Warner Brothers to repair the sucking chest wound uh, that is the Justice League movie, inflicted by the Justice League movie. There was a time uh, when Warner Brothers had high hopes for the Justice League movie. They they were looking at what the MCU was doing with the Avengers. You start out with a bunch of solo superhero movies, bring them together for one big wadded up superhero movie, uh, a team up. Uh, and then from there, you can relaunch a bunch of other little solo franchises. It's working for them. Why couldn't it work for Warner Brothers? So they brought on board Zack Snyder so that he could inflict his dismal vision of what superhero reality might look like uh, onto uh, the Super Friends. Zack Snyder did his best. He brought together Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, uh, and, uh, well, kind of The Flash. Ezra Miller is nothing like The Flash in any way. Uh, but they also needed a person of color, right? So uh, they could have used Green Lantern. They could have used the Jon Stewart version of Green Lantern. But instead, for some reason, let's take the Teen Titans cyborg and jimmy him into the Justice League. It was working in the comic books kind of uh, at the time. Uh, so here's Cyborg in the Justice League movie. Now, it, the movie was... Uh, the movie was going along swimmingly, according to this gentleman, until a family tragedy happened to Zack Snyder. Uh, something had to be done, he had to be replaced, uh, and a new director was brought on board, a fellow named Joss Whedon. Joss Whedon? Uh, Joss Whedon uh, asked for a whole lot more money, finishing completion funds, and ended up shooting and rewriting the entire movie. So instead of it being a dismal, uh, miserable uh, film, uh, it was a silly, miserable film. And the movie, of course, was an enormous catastrophe at the box office, losing hundreds of millions of dollars, okay? So everybody had to be fired, and everybody was fired. John Berg was fired. Jeff Johns was fired. Joss Whedon was fired. Diane Nelson was fired. Everybody was fired. Uh, and, you know, we brought aboard a new fellow. Us, we're Walter Hamada. Remember, we're pretending to be Walter Hamada. And we were told, hey, you're, you're very successful, uh, we're very successful at taking small budget horror films uh, and turning them around into billion dollar franchises. We take low budget films and we make a lot of money on them and we might be the guy uh, to come on board and fix this problem. Sew up this chest wound, put it behind us, forget about the Justice League and just move forward with new exciting films that actually make a profit and it would be great if we could do that because we have suffered so much we're repairing all these difficulties now the first thing that walter hamada had to cope with uh, were the fans who were saying we we want to see the Zack snyder cut uh, they we want to see the footage that Zack snyder shot for this catastrophe that everybody wants to kind of everybody wants to put behind them uh and uh so after a little while uh, okay, we coughed up $20, $20 million to Zack Snyder so that he could finish the special effects on this movie. We're going to show it on HBO Max. But we're a little bit annoyed by all of this but because we kind of feel like Zack Snyder uh, is on social media uh, pushing this, uh, making this happen, supporting this idea that his unfinished movie should get completion funds and released when we're still kind of feeling a little bit upset about the fact that the movie lost hundreds of millions of dollars and got so many people fired from their jobs. Now, we do it anyway, but we're, we're bitter about it. And we do make a little statement that says, uh, you know what? It's a dead end, though. This is a cul-de-sac creatively. We are not interested in pushing forward with Zack Snyder's uh, vision for the future of the DCU. We're going to go in another direction. Uh, and uh, we think everything's going to be okay, right? Well, it isn't because we've got this guy right here who goes, by the way, my feelings were hurt on the set of Justice League. <laughs> <laughs> and he won't go away. My feelings were hurt. People were mean to me. They were vicious. They were cruel. It was unprofessional. It was gross misconduct. Very abusive. Uh, and I'm going to tell all my fans about it on social media and demand that uh, something is done about it. Uh, even though everybody's already been fired. Fire them twice. Super fire them. Fire them over and over again. 
And uh, duh, Walter Hamada has to go, okay, well, I wasn't really here for the Justice League movie. Uh, that wasn't really my thing, but uh, we will launch an investigation as long as it will shut you up. Uh, and we will find out uh, what happened, okay? Th this gross, unprofessional, abusive environment, this toxic work environment. Uh, that comes along uh, evidently with being a movie star, but it shouldn't. It shouldn't. Being a movie star should be fun, shouldn't it? Uh, it shouldn't be a hard day at work, and nobody should ever yell at you and hurt your feelings. Uh, and so uh, they did an investigation, and that's when uh, they sacrificed Joss Whedon. In the meantime, they said to this guy, uh, hey, uh, we're getting rid of Joss Whedon. We're prepared to condemn uh John Berg, but could you please leave Jeff Johns out of it because he's still a valuable member of the studio, uh, and the stuff that he's planning, the stuff that his ideas, uh, we kind of see them as being a big part of the future of the studio and repairing the damage uh, done by the Justice League catastrophe. Uh, Ray Fisher says, no, I will never stop. I will never stop accusing Jeff Johns of being gross, abusive, and unprofessional. And now I'm going to call him racist. He was racist to me. Jeff Johns' first wife was black, by the way. So I find it interesting. Uh, any allegations that Jeff Johns is racist in any way are very strange to me. Uh, all right. So uh, in any case, he said, hey, I'm not going to work. I'm I'm never going to work with Walter Hamada again. And Walter Hamada goes, well, we did have kind of a sympathy role for you lined up in the new Flash movie starring Ezra, the horrible Ezra Miller. Uh, and uh, if you don't want to be in it, you don't have to be in it. He says, I will never work with you again. Okay, you're out. We've, we've taken your role. We've written Cyborg out of uh, the Flash movie. And by the way, nobody cares. I don't think anybody really cares if Cyborg is in it or not. So uh, now that they've done that, uh, here comes uh, our boy Ray Fisher with yet another tweet. And this is the problem with social media. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is what's so great about it. Oh, it's tragic and funny, all right? Uh, Walter Hamada ordinarily would be able to sweep this kind of a thing under the rug. You know, you'd be able to deal with PR problems, you know, because there wouldn't be so much light. Uh, but... <clears throat> social media is a little bit like a firearm. It's an equalizer. When you have social media, when you have a social media following, uh, even the smallest little ant of, a, of an actor uh, can be the equal, can have equal speaking time and get a big enough audience, as big of an audience as one of these big studios. So Ray Fisher running his mouth becomes a real problem for Warner Brothers. Uh, and it is... It is pretty funny. I mean, it's haunting Walter Hamada at this point. All right, let me open this up on Twitter. Uh, we will take a look uh, at the horror show uh, that Ray, <laughs> Ray, Ray uh, is inflicting uh, on poor uh, Walter Hamada. Oh, my God. Look at this. This is enormous. This is an enormous rant here, a tirade. Uh, oh, God. I can't, I can't take much of this. I cannot wait until Ray Fisher. I'm like Walter Hamada, too. I completely understand. I want this guy to go away. I have received official confirmation that Warner Brothers Pictures has decided to remove me from the cast of The Flash. I strongly disagree with their decision, but it is one that is unsurprising. By the way, <laughs> as JWs, of which uh, Ray Fisher is definitely one, he's definitely a social justice warrior, everything is unsurprising to them. Even the most dramatic things uh, that happen, they go, typical, unsurprising. Uh, yeah, Azalea Banks dug up her dead cat, boiled it. That didn't surprise me one bit. Typical. Uh, <laughs> Army, uh, Army Hammer, uh, he, he likes to tell his girlfriends he wants to eat their dead bodies. That's typical. That's, that's you know, I unsurprising. Not surprised here. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised either if I were you, uh, Ray Fisher, because you actually told them you didn't want to be in this uh, in this movie, remember? He says, despite the misconception, Cyborg's involvement in The Flash was much larger than a cameo. And while I do mourn the lost opportunity to bring Victor Stone back to the screen, bringing awareness to the actions of Walter Hamada, this poor guy had nothing to do with this movie, uh, will prove to be a much more important contribution to the world. On December 30th, 2020, I made it clear that I cannot with a clear conscience, participate in any production associated with the current president of DC Films, Walter Hamada. My goodness, what a dramatic thing to state. 
The the um, wow, this is fearlessness. This is definitely bravery here. The reasoning behind this declaration was twofold. Number one, Walter's purposeful attempt to undermine the Justice League investigation in order to protect his friend, the former co-president Jeff Johns. Number two. Walter's attempt to protect himself by contributing uh, to the public dissemination of lies and misinformation about myself and the Justice League investigation in Warner Brothers Pictures' September 4th statement to the rap. Bear in mind, Walter Hamada interfering with the Justice League investigation is a completely separate issue than the investigation itself. And while Walter's behavior was not a point of focus for the investigation of the Justice League reshoots, his dangerous and enabling actions during the investigation progress or process must be called to account. Boy, I'll tell you, this is serious stuff. This It sounds like he's involved in terrorism or something. On July 7, 2020, during a 57-minute long phone call with Walter, I made multiple attempts to have him escalate my claims of misconduct against Joss Whedon, Jeff Johns, and John Berg through the proper channels. Rather than escalate the situation when initially asked, Walter disparaged Joss Whedon and John Berg in an attempt to cover for Jeff Johns. When I alerted Walter that Jeff was, in fact, a major contributor to the issues experienced, including, this is big, this is the first time, blatant, blatant racism now. So uh, we, are, we are now calling Jeff Johns uh, a racist. We're calling all of these people racist. I have no problem with uh, this guy calling Joss Whedon racist, mostly because it's funny. Uh, but I know that Jeff Johns is not a racist, so I find this to be uh, disturbed and weird. Uh, all right, Walter tried, but to no avail, to get me to reveal the names of witnesses and other specifics that could be used to forewarn Jeff of the claims brought against him. Why shouldn't Jeff know? Why shouldn't Jeff be forewarned of the claims brought against him? What is the problem? Oh, <laughs> what does he have to... I mean, is this a trap? Is this a big trap that we need to spring on Jeff? Or can you tell Jeff what the problems are? That's kind of weird, isn't it? Forewarn him. Walter even went so far as to sharply dismiss certain claims of mine as untrue because of his work experience and personal relationship with Jeff. I do the same thing. I, you know, I've known Jeff for since 1999, uh, and I know Jeff rather personally. And uh, Jeff Johns is not uh, any of these things, unless Jeff suffered a head wound somewhere and became a completely different person, uh, like a, a coconut hit him on the head in Gilligan's Island style, uh, and he's completely changed his personalities. Jeff Johns is not uh, anything like this at all, uh, and I, you know, there I've worked with him. Okay, in case you don't know, I'm a comic book artist. I drew a bunch of books with Jeff Johns. We had a very good, close, creative relationship, revamping Green Lantern and The Flash together. Uh, and so uh, I can tell you from my experience, this is bullshit. Uh, all right, uh, Walter indicated. Uh, that he was briefed on Joss Whedon's problematic behavior well in advance of my speaking out on July 1st, 2020. Uh, the briefing, that briefing likely came from Jeff Johns, with whom Walter served as co-president of DC Films. Imagine this. Imagine what these guys are saying to each other. They're just like, he won't go away. Like, this guy, this guy will not go away. He was the least important cast member. Uh, and uh, this movie is like a headache that will never die down. There, there is no Tylenol. Uh, that will will make this headache go away. There is no toilet strong enough to flush this turd. He will not go away. Uh, all right, so uh, <clears throat> regardless of how he was made affair aware, uh, Walter knew there was legitimacy to my claims against Joss Whedon, yet he persisted and tried to minimize and dismiss the situation, claiming that it is a producer's job to protect the director and that he was looking to move beyond anything to do with Justice League. Yes, do you understand? This is the whole thing right here. Please. Can we just, can we put this in the rear view mirror? No, we can't. We've solved every other problem except for your hurt feelings. Uh, and now we've got to just stick around and, con and just continually dwell on this disaster. In a way, it's funny. I mean, I, you know, they <laughs> part of me wants it. Like, I like Jeff Johns and everything, but part of me thinks this is funny. They kind of deserve this kind of, uh, this trouble. It is, it is amusing. Uh, all right. <clears throat> I, it wasn't until I argued Walter down that he agreed to escalate my claims as I, citing it as above his pay grade, knowing that he had overstepped and that I had no intention of backing down. Walter made matters worse by making a tastelessly self-aware joke about not wanting me to put him on Twitter about this. That's right. <laughs> Social media. He goes, well, here we are. Here we are, everyone.
All right, so he goes on with the second page. His his mission in life is to just protect people who were brave enough to complain about the Justice League movie. Well, that's everybody. Everybody complained about the Justice League movie. You were horrible in it, right? You were absolutely terrible in it, and I want my money back. Uh, and to use what little power I possess, which is the internet, and it turns out that it's a lot of power if you have no dignity whatsoever and no plans to ever work in movies again, uh, you have tremendous power that you can wield. You can just make all kinds of accusations of racism, of coddling racists. You can tell people that uh, the new president of DC Films probably supports and hides workplace abuse. You can do all that stuff, which is what you did here. Uh, and then you... Uh, <laughs> I will submit to a polygraph test. You can put me in a lie detector uh, and you can uh, say that all of my wild, crazy accusations, at least I completely believe them. Uh, and that is uh, that is sad. He says at the end of my time as cyborg, if that if the cost of that is uh, that I get to bring awareness and accountability to Walter Hamada's actions, I mean it's this is just brutality. This is irresponsible beyond belief. It's just irresponsible. He says I'll pay it gladly. Well, you know what? Your career was worth nothing. So uh, you were terrible. You sucked as cyborg. I don't want to ever see you as cyborg again. Uh, and so uh, yeah, you know. Uh, your, I will pay my Hollywood career uh, to uh, tell you to go F yourself, if that's the cost. If telling you to go F yourself and to stop calling uh, nice people racist costs me my career in the ballet, uh, I would pay gladly. So uh, now I'm not going to get to work in the ballet, but F you. F you. Thanks, everyone. Art is not more, I mean, accountability is not, accountability is not more important than entertainment. Uh, I don't care how you would treat it on the movie. You have a responsibility to create entertaining product to serve millions and millions of uh, people, patrons who go to the movies to escape their boring humdrum lives in which they are not movie stars, getting to rub shoulders with uh, other movie stars and get paid a whole lot of money to put on uh, a green screen uh, suit uh, and pretend, pretend to be a superhero. So uh, I don't care about this. I care about this. Uh, this is for elitists like you, accountability. Uh, entertainment is for um, the rabble, like myself. Uh, I want to be entertained. Uh, and I, in a way, I guess this is kind of entertaining. Your antics are kind of amusing. Thanks, everybody, for watching this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I read all of your comments. I put hearts by them if I like them, if, I, if they stand out. Subscribe to this channel again, I ask, and I will see you again soon with another video. New from all caps comics, Rainbow the Brute, the last real man in fairyland. A tale of prismatic pain, a spectrum of brutality, and a pretty good dad. Choke slam a unicorn by backing it today, only on Indiegogo. New from all caps comics, Snowman, a cold day in hell. The victim of a genocidal massacre has somehow returned from the dead and is carving a path of death across the heart of America. Driven by the echoes of silent screams, this is the story of a man once known as Black Dog, the one now forever known as the Snowman. Snowman, a cold day in hell, back it today, only on Indiegogo.